Lord, I see a man, see a man standing, standing by the Jordan, wiping tears. Oh Lord, from everybody's eyes, I see a man, I see a man, and he's standing, standing by the Jordan, wiping tears, wiping tears from everybody's eyes. Oh, I never knew, I never knew, I never knew what man like this before. Who can open? Who can open? I see a man. I see a man standing by the door. I see a man. I see a man standing by the door. I see a man. I see a man standing by the door. I believe. I believe he's waiting for me. I see a man. I see a man. The sermon you're about to hear was preached at the 39th Annual Southeastern Regional Lectureship in Charlotte, North Carolina. The title of this sermon is Three Sheep and the Shepherd Doctor. It comes from Psalm 23 and verse number four. And what I was concerned with with this sermon is uh, talking about some needs that sheep have and the response that shepherds ought to have. Often in Bible terminology, the people of God are referred to as the flock or as the sheep. And David went through his own valleys and his own difficulties, and he uses the 23rd Psalm to show how God takes care of his flock. And you'll notice in verse 4 that there is a transition in the text. In the first three verses, David talked about the shepherd. In verse number four, he talks to the shepherd. And so we invite you to listen to this sermon, Three Sheep and the Shepherd Doctor. Uh, turn with me to Psalm 23. And I believe either I heard Brother Riley wrong or there's a misprint in the program the verse that is assigned to me is verse number four. And uh, my topic, at least what I heard him say, was three sheep and the sheep doctor. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The book of Psalms has given us much comfort and consolation. The book of Psalms has raised us up in crucial and critical moments. The book of Psalms has been a relief when we are going through something. Someone said that Psalms is an oasis for weary souls. How, how often have we turned to the book of Psalms when we just needed some encouragement? Scriptures like the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, scriptures like Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And every now and then, we need to look at Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And I believe all of us have been at that point where somebody had to tell us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalms have been there for us to give us some encouragement. And in this particular verse, the psalmist says, yea, though I walk through the valley, of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, 
they comfort me. The psalm reminds us that we just don't live in a perfect world. In a perfect world, there would be no storm clouds. In a perfect world, no strong winds would blow. In a perfect world, the sun would always shine. In a perfect world, there would be no wars or rumors of war. In a perfect world, no guns, no gangs, no jails, and no prisons. In a perfect world, the lion could lie down with the lamb. The wicked would cease from troubling, and the weary would be at rest. That's in a perfect world, but the world is far from perfect. And this particular psalm reminds us that there are sheep in this world who are hurting, sheep who are bruised, bloody, and broken. There are sheep who need a doctor in the worst way. And when I look at this, this psalm, it's not only the behavior of sheep that's important, but it's the preparation of the shepherd that's important. We, we know that sheep are bruised and sheep are broken and sheep are bloody, but in order to attend to that kind of sheep, we need a shepherd who is well equipped. We, we need a sheep doctor who specializes in sheepology. I said sheepology because sheep are funny kind of animals. They, they are not like cows or horses or pigs or chicken. You, you got to have some knowledge of sheepology because sheep are dependent creatures. Sheep are defenseless creatures. And somebody said that sheep are sometimes dumb creatures. Sheep by nature are stubborn. Sheep by nature will stray. And sheep will, in the human vernacular, they show sure enough will sin. And sheep are suffering. And there are three things that sheep need it by a good shepherd. They, they need God's presence in their life. They need God's power in their life. And they need God's protection in their life. Now, now if y'all help me, I get through this. And don't worry about the camera now. Just act like y'all at church on Sunday morning. What I see in verse 4 is the accessibility of divinity. Because the text says, for thou art with me. I see the authority of divinity because he talks about the rod giving him comfort. I see the assurance of divinity because not only did the rod give him comfort, but the staff gave him some comfort. So, so the sheep in this particular text, they, they, needed some, they needed some presence. They needed God's power, and they needed God's protection. When I look at the first three verses in Psalm 23, when I get to verse 4, there's a transition in the text. Because in the first three verses, he has talked about the shepherd. But in verse number 4, he starts talking to the shepherd. Uh, he moves from the third person to the second person. In, in other words, we can talk about God all day long, but it's another thing when you have to talk to God. I can talk about the greatness of God. I can talk about how mighty God is, but every now and then you have to walk through the valley and you have to talk to God. You're not talking just about how great he is and how powerful he is. Everybody, every now and then, needs to talk to God. And David gets personal, and David gets intimate, and David says, I need somebody with me when I go through my valleys. Summer has ended, and autumn is approaching. And there's a long drive that the shepherd is taking his sheep on. And he has to move from the valley and he's trying to get to higher ground. 
And the shepherd realizes that in order to get to higher ground, he's got to take his sheep through the deep valley. And they got to climb up the mountain. And there are some slopes. And it's slippery. And there are some snakes. And there are uh, uh, some wolves. And there are some bears that, that they're going to encounter. There's some danger as they go through the valley. I want to say in order to get to the mountain, everybody has to go through the valley. There's difficulties in the valley. Danger lies in the valley. Disappointment and discouragement lie in the valley. You've got to go over rocks and rivers. You've got to deal with wind and weather. You've got to deal with fear and frustration. You've got to deal with floods and fatigue. And you've got to deal with all of that in the valley. David knew about some valleys because he had some valleys in his life. He went from a giant slayer to ducking javelins. He went from playing a harp for the king to hiding in caves from the king. David knew about some valleys. He had some familiar friends. Psalm 55, his own equal who took sweet counsel with him and walked with him in the house of God, but they were laying traps and were reproaching him. David knew about some valleys. He had his own blood son Absalom who stole the hearts of men and had a scheme to take his daddy's throne. David knew about some valleys. And I think if we would be honest on tonight, you and I know about some valleys. Preachers know about some valleys. Business meetings can be a valley. Budget time can be a valley. Appreciation for the minister can be a valley. Sickness and health can be a valley. I need a raise, but I can't talk to nobody about the raise. You in a valley. We all know about some valleys. Sometimes sickness and health will take you in a valley. You got more money at the end of the month than money at the end of the month, you in a valley. We all know about valleys in life. But what I like about this text is David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though we got to take this journey to get to higher ground and the shadow of death will approach us, danger is there and difficulties is there, David said, I will fear no evil. I want to say to the child of God, I'll not have any fear in the valley because sheep need to be free in order to be good sheep. Free from what? Well, sheep need to be free from friction. That means they need not have friction with others of their own kind. I wish I could talk to somebody tonight because if we need anything in the church, we need less friction among members in the church. We need to get along with one another. We need to love one another. We, we don't need a click here and a click there and a click over there and a camp here and a camp there and a camp somewhere else. We need to be free from friction in the body of Christ. We need to be free from pests and able to relax. Free from hunger where we can feed on the word of God. Free from fear. And, and the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. We, we ought not be afraid of anybody in the church of Christ. And, and he said, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And I want to say right here, evil is everywhere. We know evil is in our neighborhoods. And evil is in our cities. But I came by to say evil shows up at the church house. Evil knows how to come to church on Sunday morning. Evil will come back Sunday night. And evil will show up the midweek Bible class. And evil lurks around us. I, I heard somebody say, don't be surprised when the devil shows up at church because the devil is on every level. There's a devil in the world and there's a devil in the church. But, but David said, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. In other words, David said, when evil comes, I got some divine presence. I've got God in me. I got God with me. And I got God for me. In other words, I need a shepherd who is accessible. Y'all got a minute here? 
any shepherd who is a real shepherd is a visible shepherd. You can't shepherd by incognito. You can't shepherd and be invisible. You, you cannot be a good shepherd and the only time the sheep see you is on Sunday morning. You, you, you got to be where the sheep are. You, you got to be close to the sheep. and You got to be in touch with the sheep. You, you got to be accessible. And, and sometimes I think that in the lost church, we talk about shepherding and we talk about elders and we talk about overseeing and oversight and we don't have any idea what that really means. Somebody told me about a country church that only had two elders, and, and, and their, their concept of oversight was one elder sat on the platform raised, on, in one chair on one side, and the other elder sat on the other side, and they looked over uh, the congregation, and that was their concept of oversight. That ain't oversight, y'all. Oversight is taking care of the needs and seeing to the needs and visiting the members and getting involved in the lives of the members and being there when the members need you and, and being there before they realize they even need you. And David said, when I go through my valley, I don't have any fear because I know my shepherd is with me every step of the way. We need a shepherd who's always around. So I see an accessibility of divinity, but I also see the authority of divinity because David says the rod is there and the rod is there to give him some comfort. Sheep doctors have to have the right equipment to deal with the complexities that sheep have. The rod was a symbol of power and authority. And the rod was used to fight off predators and enemies and wild animals that would bother the sheep. The rod was a weapon that was about two feet in length with a sharp point on the end and a fork on the other end. It was an instrument of protection. It could drive out predators. It could drive out snakes. But when the shepherd developed his rod, he became familiar with the rod. He practiced using the rod. He got so accustomed with the rod that the rod became an extension of the shepherd's right arm. He, he, he knew that rod. He knew how to handle the rod. He knew what to do with the rod. He felt comfortable with the rod. He and the rod was one. He just didn't pick up his rod on Sunday or Saturday before Sunday or Wednesday. He was in tune with the rod 24-7. The rod was used for discipline. And I just want to say right here that we need to respect the word of God. Some folk may doubt the Bible. Some folk may reject the Bible. And some folk may even misuse the Bible. But I still believe tonight that the Bible is the authoritative word of God. I believe that the Bible is inspired, that the Bible is inerrant, and the Bible is infallible. I, I believe that God still speaks through his word, and his word is the Bible, and ain't no mistakes in the Bible, and, and we don't have to mistrust the Bible. We, we can put our trust in the Bible. It's the word of God. I, I, I don't know about uh, folk are being super smart and they want to question the Bible. They want to question the manuscripts. They want to question the copies. They want to question God Almighty. I believe God wrote the Bible. It's inspired. Ain't no mistakes in the Bible. And even in the church of Christ, we need to have more respect for the word of God. It's alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It will help you get to heaven. It will keep you away from sin. And we need to use the rod of God, which is the word of God. But shepherds also would use the rod in another way. Uh, 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 they, would, they had something that they called uh, with the sheep when a sheep would 
pass under the rod. And the sheep would come out of their stall and, and the shepherd would carefully, one by one, take that rod and examine the sheep. Lord have mercy. And, and what he would do is he would take that rod and he would pull the wool back and he would look underneath the wool and check the sheep's skin and check his body to see if there was any disease and see if there was any parasite because a sheep could look good on the outside. But when you pull the wool apart, he may not be good on the inside. So the shepherd had to get close enough. Y'all don't hear me yet. I'm going somewhere with here. The shepherd couldn't shepherd from a distance. He would take that rod and, and, and to keep the sheep from pulling the wool over his eyes, he would pull the wool aside and examine the sheep and make sure that the sheep was in good condition. And, and that's the kind of shepherd we need today. And that's how God does us. He searches us and he tries us and he sees whether or not we are in good condition. And so the rod represents power, authority, and defense. But then there's the assurance of divinity. Because he said not only does the rod comfort him, but there's a staff. The staff is a symbol of concern, a symbol of compassion and support. The staff was used for drawing sheep together in an intimate relationship. And the staff was used to reach out and catch individual sheep and give them guidance. Because sheep doctors know that sheep are stubborn by nature. They go places they ain't got no places going. They will do things they have no business doing. And sometimes sheep refuse to go where they need to go. And if you're dealing with folk and if you understand sheepology, you know that in the business we in, we're trying to get to heaven. But folks sometimes act like they don't want to go where they need to go. Just ask Moses. Moses would tell you that some folk would rather die in Egypt then cross the Red Sea. Ask Joshua and Caleb, they would tell you some folk will have this grasshopper mentality and would not want to go and conquer the land. Ask any preacher, and sometimes we realize that sometimes folk don't want to go to heaven and they need some guidance on their spiritual journey. As I close and take my seat, I, I don't know where you are. You may not want to go, but I'm trying to go somewhere tonight. And the place I'm trying to go is a place called heaven. Somebody said it's a mansion over the hilltop. I don't have all the stats and all the specs on that place. I don't know about his exterior and interior. I have not spoken to the architect. I, I can't tell you if it's one level or two level, split level or ranch style, but I'm trying to go somewhere tonight. I don't know whether it's a hill, it's in the hill or down in the valley. It may be on an avenue or a boulevard. It may be on a cul-de-sac or by the side of the road, but I'm trying to go somewhere tonight. And I don't know a lot. I know a lot about the one who prepared it. He has a, prep, a reputation for doing all things well. And we need a sheep doctor who cares enough to take us to heaven. The road may be rough. The night may be dark. The situation may be bad. But I know somebody who cares. The battle may be tough. And the load may be heavy. But I know somebody who cares. The world may not care, but I know a shepherd who cares. Tears can fill your eyes. Clouds may hide your face. Pain may inflict your body. Bruises may bend your back, but I know somebody who cares. The doctor cares about your body. The lawyer cares about your, your case. The accountant cares about your money. The mechanic cares about your car. But I know somebody who cares about my soul. Give me a shepherd doctor who will take me when I'm stubborn and take me when I'm suffering and take me when I'm sick. And give me a shepherd doctor who can't be bought, bartered, or badgered by the enemy. Give me a shepherd doctor who won't compromise or flinch when the battle is fierce. 
Give me a shepherd doctor who's committed and concerned, saved and willing to make a sacrifice. Give me a shepherd doctor who's fearless in the face of danger, calm in the midst of pressure, and bold in the midst of opposition. And if you give me a shepherd doctor like that, I can say just like David, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We need a shepherd who cares. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endure forever. We have a very special series of programs we want to share with our audience. Uh, we taped the 39th annual Southeastern Regional Lectureship, which was held in Charlotte, North Carolina, October 1 through October 4th. And we have uh, six outstanding speakers that you're going to see uh, in the upcoming future. Uh, you're going to see uh, Brother Douglas Goodman from Annapolis, Maryland, Brother Joseph Brown, Richmond, Virginia, uh, Brother Jesse Tolliver, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, Brother Wesley T. Leonard, Orlando, Florida, and Brother Orpheus Hayward. You, you're going to see them in the next few weeks. Uh, they preached at the 39th Annual Southeastern Regional Lectureship. The theme of this lectureship was uh, getting through what you're going through. And most of the lessons were taken from the 23rd Psalm. And I know the 23rd Psalm has been refreshing and uplifting and encouraging to many of us uh, when we were in the valley, when we had our mountain highs and our valley lows. And so I invite you, I encourage you uh, to get ready to hear some mighty, mighty good preaching. And next year, the Southeastern Lectureship is October 7th through the 10th. 2013 in Orlando, Florida. You'll be hearing more uh, about this. So get your Bible and get ready to listen to some mighty, mighty good preaching. Lord, I see you, man, I see you, man standing, standing by the Jordan. Why do you teach? Oh, Lord, from everybody's eyes. I see you, man. I see you, man. And he's standing, standing by the Jordan. Why do you teach? Why teach from everybody's eyes? Oh, I never knew. I never knew. I never knew what man like this before. Who can open? I see a man, I see a man standing by the door. I see a man, I see a man standing by the door. I see a man.